this series has been so powerful. Testimonies have been coming from everywhere. I have never seen it like this before, to where he, he told me what this talk about. He said, for the whole month, I want you to talk about my love. And me merely just talking about it. I'm not going, God said, ha. I ain't doing that. I'm just talking about it. And the love of God is backing it up. His love is doing what phonic articulation can't do. Let me read you. Um, I, I, last week, if you were here last week, I told you all these testimonies. Let me read you something that came through my email um, um, from a guy. I think this guy's out of New York. He says, Pastor Joe Johnson, he says, um, I, I am in great humility. God made me watch your program. He says, I'm so grateful. Hell broke out when I told God, yes, that I watch it. He says, uh, he said, I've never been to the hospital before. All of a sudden, I'm in the emergency room in four different hospitals in one week. God made the doctors not even be able to see the pain. So he was in excruciating pain, and the doctors couldn't die. They couldn't figure out what it was. They couldn't even see it or monitor it or evaluate it. He says, God, as, he says, as, as my pain was so excruciating, Pastor, he says, I received your message on the perfected love. He says, uh, the perfected love of God, and as my pain was excruciating, I finally got it. In other words, when I was get, releasing revelation, he was like, it finally clicked. I finally got it. He was like, as long as I've known God, I finally get it now. He says, in my greatest pain, I said, Lord, and then the Holy Spirit interrupted me and said, be quiet. And then played the message, an, an excerpt from it. And he says, and I actually heard your voice saying, receive. The love of God. Receive the perfected joy of God. He says, and when I heard your voice, I was healed instantly. The moment he heard me saying, receive the perfected love of God. The excruciating pain that the doctors couldn't diagnose healed. Because Dr. Jesus gave him a love injection. The medicine of love that heals uncurable, undetectable diseases. The love of God that goes deep down on the inside of a person's molecular structure and heals what the doctors don't have formulas from. The love of God. Prophesied to the person next to you and say, be loved, be loved, be loved. He said, we're playing your messages all around here every day. I've been on staff at the Potter's House. You know, everybody knows who the Potter's House church is. I've been on um, staff at the Potter's House, and I've never received a life-changing word like this ever. Wow. Say to the person next to you, you're the beloved. So be loved. So what have we learned so far in, in, in this series? We learned that uh, one of the revelations that we got is that when you get a, a revelation of the perfected love of God, you get an understanding that God actually likes you. Not only does he like you, he loves you. And because he loves you, he has your best interest at heart always. God wants the best for you. He really does. He's trying to get the best to you every single time. And when you have that revelation that God wants the best for you, jealousy has no place. When you have the revelation that God likes you and wants the best for you and has your best interest at heart, comparison goes away. You are not to compare yourself to anybody at any time for any reason, at any stage, because there's actually no comparison to you. There's no way that I can be you because you are the best you that you can be. You are the one that God, you're the best version of you that God made. I cannot, be, I cannot outdo you. My pace is not your pace. Your pace is not pace. My pace, and I don't want your pace. All I want is what God has for me. Because what God, the cliche says, what God has for me, what? It is? Nobody else can have it. When you have a revelation of the perfected love of God, you operate with confidence. It's just different because now you're not operating in performance. See, our parents raised us up and taught us like this. When you do right, I like you. When you do wrong, I don't like you. Some of our boyfriends and girlfriends taught us that, you know, if you do this, I'm in love with you. If, if you don't do this, I'm not in love with you. But the love of God doesn't work that way. The love of God doesn't work based off of your performance. And when you get love like that, you perform differently. You perform with, with, with confidence. And you know what confidence is? And I, and I love this part. I haven't even said it yet. I love this. I, it, it, confidence is, God help them to see this. Real confidence is an appreciation of what you carry. 
It's not people appreciating what you carry. It's you appreciating what you carry. When you know that the Lord loves you and you know the Lord put something on the inside of you, you begin to appreciate what you carry. You're carrying something completely different. So now that I know that I'm carrying something different, I'm connecting to people on a different level. And I'm not just, just allowing anybody in my circle. I'm allowing the people in my circle who can value me properly, who can see what I carry. And also, too, because I'm loved by God, I'm not hurting the people who have lost sight of me. That's right. That's good. See, Angel, when you know that you're loved by God, you don't have to try to pull people back and pull people into loving you and trick them into loving you and manipulate them into loving you and being passive aggressive because they stop loving you it doesn't matter if you lose sight of me i know that god sees me that means that somebody else is going to see my true value are you listening to me the love of god exposes you to what you actually carry see me gerald anthony johnson i, I go where i said this before i go where i'm celebrated not where i'm tolerated because i know what i deserve I know what I'm supposed to be receiving because there's something on the inside of me from the most high God, something inside of me from Yeshua HaMashiach, something inside of me from the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. There's something on the inside of me from what the Bible calls the ancient of days. There's something on the inside of me that's greater than anything in this earth. And because of that, my value is great. I'm valued and I'm loved by God. So I'm not shrinking for anybody. And if someone can't see me, that's okay. Maybe you'll see somebody else. God has somebody that can see me the right way. When you understand the perfected love of God, you operate with a different level of confidence. Now, here's three things that every... Now, listen to this. Many people don't have confidence because confidence really uh, stems from your dad, from your father. And there are three things that every child needs from their father. If they don't have these things, they will lack confidence. They'll be like explorers with no map. Uh, no, uh, no map. They'll be like a person who's, uh, who, who feels like something's missing, something, something's lost, and can't really connect to relationships and keep relationships because they didn't get this from their father. There are three things. And we'll find these things in the way that God publicly loved on Jesus. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 3. And it's on your screen, reading out of the New King James Version. Three things. Say that with me. Three things. Three things. Now let me break this passage down so you'll see this. You've read this many times, but I want you to see uh, Jesus, uh, God's public endorsement and the three things that all of us need. The Bible says in uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately out of the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. Now, now I want to mess up your theology. Some of you all have it in your brains that Jesus saw a bird. Jesus did not see it. This ain't church's chicken. Jesus did not see a bird. Jesus saw the Holy Ghost. He saw the spirit of God. And the spirit of God was descending like a dove. Someone say like a dove. Let me mess up your theology a little bit more. Some of y'all think that when a dove came down on Jesus, it was like, Wah. no, 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 no. Have you ever seen a dove land? When a dove land, a dove is swift. A dove, he moves quick in and out, up and down. His, he's stealth. His wings actually make noises. Not his voice, but his wings make noises. So when Jesus saw the Holy Ghost coming down, it was just kind of like, oh, oh, oh. My God, I, 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 the power of God is all over me. And, and also, when he realized the, the, the love of God, and when he realized the Holy Ghost, he was able to see the love of God. Watch this. Holy Spirit, Jesus saw the Holy Spirit, and then he realized the love of God. He saw the Holy Spirit, and then God said, this is my beloved son. He saw the Holy Spirit, and then love was pronounced on him. Let me show you something. Once you, get a, once you can see right, and see the Holy Spirit, right? I told you that the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 5, the love of God is placed upon our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Your perception of the Holy Spirit will be uh, your, um, your ability to receive the revelation of love. Someone say, Lord, let me see the Holy Spirit right. Lord, Holy Spirit. Say it again, please. Let me see Holy Ghost right. Say Holy Ghost because sometimes it sounds more powerful when you say Holy Ghost. 
let me get a revelation of the holy let me get a revelation of the holy ghost acts chapter 1 verse 8 says you shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you acts chapter 2 verse 4 says they all received the holy ghost and they were filled with power the book of acts chapter 10 verse 44 says the holy ghost fell on all which heard the word and they began to prophesy acts chapter 19 says have you been filled with the holy ghost since you believe once you get a revelation of the holy ghost love comes Someone say, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Ooh, be careful what you ask for. Because like a dove, God sometimes is unpredictable. You could be driving down your street and all of a sudden, bam, here he goes. You can wake up and all of a sudden, boom, here it is. They had a song in the 80s, whoop, there it is. Someone say that, whoop, there it is. Mmm. Mmm. Uh oh, someone just got a whoop. <laughs> when you get a revelation of the love of God, you see it different. And then watch this. These are three things that everyone needs. He saw the Holy Ghost. His perception birthed love. Now, watch what, what the Lord did. Yahweh, Father God, did with Jesus. Put my passage back up. Matthew chapter 3 says this. First thing he said was, This is my son. My beloved son, every child needs their dad or their father or their father figure to take ownership. Say, you belong to me. That's why people get in gangs and all those kind of things, but they don't have a sense of belonging. That's why people, that's why people negotiate bad relationships just to belong somewhere. If a person doesn't have a belonging anywhere, they will lack confidence. The second thing, this is my beloved son. Every child needs to know that their dad loves them. If, you're not, if you don't know that your dad loves you, you will subconsciously lack confidence. When you don't know that you love, you just lack it. And then the third thing is, in whom I'm well pleased. Every child needs to know that their authority figure or their father or, or, or the person over them is pleased with them. That you're doing a good job. I want to tell you today, do, do that. You're doing a good job. You're trying your best. Did you make you? No. So you didn't come with some kind of manual on how to be perfect. God says, I'm training you in this lifetime and you're doing a good, tell someone next to you, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. God publicly endorsed Jesus by giving him the three things. And what I want you to know in this, everything that God gave to Jesus in Matthew 3 is the same way that God feels about you. Everything that God gave Jesus in that text, he gave you at the exact same time he gave it to Jesus. The reason why is because if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, you are in Christ. When you're in Christ, all that God said to Christ is now upon you. Let's look at that in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. Because I don't like talking if I can't give you any word behind it. Ephesians chapter 1, still in the New King James language. Someone say, neighbor, neighbor. be loved. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says this, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with how many spiritual blessings? Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in who? Christ. Verse 4 says, just as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should, should be holy and without blame before him in love. He has predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, by Jesus Christ to himself, by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to be the praise of his glory, of his grace, which he has made us accepted in the beloved. This is my beloved son. You are accepted in the beloved. You see that? Jesus is the beloved of God, and because he is the beloved of God, you are accepted in the beloved. Whew. Let me show you this word, beloved. And I'm going to be a little ghetto, because I'm, I'm going to move this. Why don't you guys uh, put, my, um, put my, my thing up there so we can see it. Can you guys see this well from the side over here? This word, beloved, is different. The word love in the Greek is agape. We all know that. But this is different. This is agapetos. This is, is a state of being. It's an adjective. 
And, and, and when, you, when God calls you beloved, it means so much more than what you knew uh, um, before. When he calls you beloved, it means that not only are you beloved, but you're esteemed. The word esteemed has its meaning in promoted. That means that before you went on your job and requested a raise, you were already promoted. That means that before you ran for a public office, you were already promoted. That means you don't need anybody to be jocking anybody or, or, or kissing up to anybody, should I say, because God has already promoted you because you are his beloved. Not only are you esteemed, but you're dear to God. That means that he cares about who offends you. He's really, he's really sensitive towards you. He's really, he's really at a place where he's saying, like, listen, I, 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 they're near and dear to my heart, just like when we do a wedding. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here in the sight of God in this great company to bring together this man and this woman in the holy state of matrimony. Not only are you beloved, esteemed, and dear, but you're his favorite. When God says, I set my love on you, when God says that you are my beloved, what God is saying is that you are favored by me. The favor of God is on everyone who receives a revelation of the perfected love of God. You are favored beyond those who apply for the same thing that you applied for. You're favored in your house. You're favored in the market. You're favored in your bank accounts. You're favored in your relationships. You are God's favorite. God has already, someone say, God, do me a favor. He says, I've already done it. Woo! The favor of the living God. Let me tell you how the favor of God works. Back, back in 2000, I don't know what year this was. I was probably 19 years old when I was young G. I, I had just gotten saved, and I was just figuring out the whole, the whole favor piece. And, and this is crazy. I got to take my glasses off for this one. Crazy testimony. I, I, was, I think I was like 19 years old or so, and I was kind of close to my age now. And, and so I, in the city with the second highest unemployment rate in the nation. I was unemployed. I had to go to this unemployment office that I hated. Carpet smelled like most, smelled like poverty. Y'all ever smelled poverty before? Some of you can't smell it because you're, you're in it, you're too used to it, but we, we, the love of God is removing you out of there right now. Poverty has a scent and a voice and a feeling. Feels like mold. So I find myself, I was telling Vic, because Vic's from the hood, I find myself stop doing what I used to do making, to make money. And, 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 you know, I had to put the bag down, for those of you who know, to make money the right way because now I'm saved. And so when I got saved, I got broke. <laughs> Are you listening to me? But I'd rather be broke and saved then have money and no love and on my way to hell. So I said, God, when, I, when I'm doing this, I'm going to do this thing right. They raised me wrong, I'm going to do this right. So I said, I'll go broke for you. Stop making money. And, and, and I went down to my lowest. So now here I am, a guy who used to, I was used to getting, getting, that, getting money. And, um, and God, here I am, I find myself in the, in the, in the city that has a second, like I said, second highest unemployment rate. And I'm sitting in the office. I can't remember how many people in there, but it was hundreds of people. And I came in like last. I walk in and take one of those stupid numbers <laughs> and sit down in the back. But I had favor on my life. And this is impossible. All of a sudden, a lady opens up a back door. She comes out and she says, is Gerald Johnson in here? And I was like, me? I went down to the front where she was. I came in last, you guys, waiting on all these people because all, all, what's going to happen is when you go, they're going to tell you that there are no jobs. You're just going so that you can get eligible for unemployment and all that kind of stuff. You just, you just sign up for, you know, so, so, so they're going to tell you that there are no jobs. I go up to this lady and she says, Mr. Johnson, she says, I don't know why I'm doing this and I don't want you to tell anybody. I was like, I ain't telling nobody. I ain't telling nobody. I ain't telling nobody. I don't, I don't even know you. I don't know what you do. What? What? Tell me. I was like, whatever you said to me is good. I don't, I don't know you. I don't know nothing. You, I, no. She said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but don't, don't tell anybody. But I'm going to, I'm moving you. I'm, I'm going to give you a job at, at Chrysler making $16 an hour part-time. 
to me, a guy 19 making $16 an hour in a place full of un unemployment, that's a miracle. She took me from the back, placed me in the front, and I'm here to prophesy to a, bu a bunch of you all in this house this morning. God, some of you, he's taking you from the back. He's placing you in the front. Some of you have been counted out. They thought you weren't going to make it. They thought you were a failure. God says, I'm taking you from the back. I'm placing you in the front because of my favor. Some of you weren't eligible for marriage into two years. Guys, I'm taking you from the back, placing you to the front because of my favor. Some of you weren't eligible for promotions and degrees. God says, I'm taking you from the back and placing you in the front because of my favor. Someone say favor. The favor of God is the love of God. What's so good about favor is this. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and add no sorrow. When God gives you his favor, no sorrow will be attached to. In fact, God's favor is always pregnant with a baby. I went to the job that they told me. Someone snatched favor and say, favor! favor! Hallelujah. Watch, watch what, what's going to happen. I went to the job that they told me. And when I got there and I signed up, ready to punch in, the guy says, what are you talking about? We don't have you down for $16 an hour. We have you down for $21 an hour. We don't have you down for part time. We have you down for full time. Benefits, health insurance, life insurance. Now the favor of God is on my life where I can take care of a full family. Last week I was unemployed. This week, last week I was in the ghetto. This week I'm in the get mo. Someone say favor. The favor of God is the love of God. You better get a revelation of the perfected love of God. You get this love on you, man. This favor is going to come on you. This promotion is going to come on you. The goodness of the Lord is going to come on you because of God's love. Tell someone, be loved, be loved, be loved. The last thing about the love of God, the beloved, when you get a revelation of it, what the word means, it means Worthy of love. Hmm. Some of us cannot really receive the love of God because we don't feel worthy of love. But God says, the moment I called you my beloved, you became worthy. One of the reasons why we can't, we don't feel worthy of the love of God is because of how bad people have treated us in the past devalued us so we don't even feel worthy even of God's love one of the reasons why we will live with someone I'm, 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 I'm gonna hit you on the wrist a little bit we'll live with someone for years and years and years and, 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 and settle for them not marrying us is because we don't feel worthy of love we'll give up the sex real easy second date you didn't gave it up why because you're not worthy of a ring you don't feel worthy of a ring some of us, we can't, even, we can't even receive compliments because we don't feel worthy of love. But God says, you don't have to settle for that. Don't settle for second best. You're my beloved. Because you're my beloved, I'll make the right people love you. Because you're my love, I'll put you in the right positions that's already prepared for you. Because you're my beloved, I've got a ring in the spirit waiting on you with a man connected to it the moment you can see me right. Let me love you right. Let, let me get inside of you. Let, let me pour my love inside of you. Open up your heart right now like Corey was saying. Let me give it to you because when I give it to you, I'm giving you all of my favor. Someone say, be loved. The love of God is coming upon your life right now. But you have to know that you're worthy of it. Because generally speaking, you will attract what you feel you're worthy of. Mm -hmm. People will treat you based on your knowledge of your self-worth. God says, I want you to know you. But you can't know you without knowing me. This is what the love of God is doing for you right now. Sometimes it's difficult to discern the love of God. I didn't say this in the first service, but sometimes it's difficult to discern the love of God. So sometimes you have to hear God talk about his own stuff. It's good to hear the, it's good to hear the, the prophets talk about it. 
and, and the pastors talk about him, uh, but let's see what God has to say about his own self. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus 34. This is when uh, Moses had messed his life up. He had broke the two tablets that God had gave, given him. Anybody ever broke some things before? Anybody messed up some stuff God gave you before? Sometimes you don't feel worthy of love because you messed up. But God is not that kind of God. He's not going to beat you the moment you mess up. Now, when you stay in some stuff, believe me, you're going to pay the consequences. But it's not like our parents. It's like, as soon as you do something wrong, bam! Yeah, that's not the Lord. Let's listen to the Lord's resume of his own self. He says, Moses, you broke the tabernacles. You broke the other uh, tablets. Come back on up into the mountain. I got another, I got another gift for you. Moses goes back up into, into the mountain. And then God passes by him. And then God begins to give his own uh, resume. It says, the Lord passed in front of Moses and called out, Yahweh, the Lord. This man, the Lord, <laughs> he calls his own name out. The true, the true translation of this is Yahweh, Yahweh. In other words, if you didn't hear it the first time, I'll say it again. I am God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. That's the God that you serve. This is what he said to mankind directly. I'm the God that's filled with unfailing love. I'm not like your third grade boyfriend. I'm not like the one that quit you. My love will never fail for you. I'm filled. I, I am filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. He says, I, I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin. But I do not excuse the guilty. And then he goes on to give the punishment for the guilty. Because if you stay in stuff, that stuff will hit your, your family. To, the Bible says that to three and four generations. When rebellion gets into the blood, sometimes it takes ten generations to cleanse it out. But that's why we have the blood of Jesus. To come and come give you a supernatural blood transfusion and cleanse what the law said you shouldn't be cleansed from. He says, I'm the Lord, full of unfailing love. And let me close with this. Because I think you guys are getting the picture now about the perfected love of God. If you don't have the perfected love of God, you don't have confidence. And when you don't have confidence, man, you mess up all your relationships. It's hard to connect to people. It's hard to really stay in something. We self-sabotage a lot because we don't even feel that we're worthy of somebody to love us for 40 years. A lot of men go from woman to woman to woman to woman to woman. It's easy to have 40 women. Right, Kenneth? <laughs> I'm just joking. Get you in trouble. It's easy to have 40 women. But it takes a real man to be with one woman for 40 years. You listen, it takes a real man to love somebody deeply, for real, and stay committed. Some people can't love because they don't have love and they don't have confidence. But also, too, uh, some people can't love because they've been beaten so bad by fathers and by people in their lives that it's hard for them to even love God. It's like, God, it's hard to love you. I want to trust you. And I want to love you. And I want to give my heart to you. But I got a feeling that you're going to do the same thing to me that everybody else has done to me. You're going to love me up front and then play me in the back. And as soon as our relationship is challenged, you're going to leave too. That's the reason why some of us, we can't receive good for too long because it's like, I know something bad's about to happen. Anybody been there before? It's like, it's hard for me to even celebrate my good because I know something bad's going to happen. We've been in the test so long. We've been in the battle. So we've been battle tested so much that we self-sabotage our blessing because something's going to go wrong anyway. That ain't God. God says my love is unfailing. And because of that, it's been hard for us to love him. And this is what really blows me away about the love of God. I don't get it. God says in his word, that if you're having trouble loving me, if you don't love me, he said, if you just submit to the idea of love, I'll make your heart love me. Renee, well, that's crazy. Because if it's me and you don't love me, I don't love you. <laughs> I'm just joking. I love everybody, but I ain't going to make you love me. I start talking ghetto when I really feel it. <laughs> you see, I'm not going to make you love me. If you don't love me, you just don't. It's okay, because I know that I am loved. You see what I'm saying? So why would I make you love me? But God says, I will, I will, I will stoop down. I, I will stoop down and, and, and make your heart love me when you can. 
kind of love is that? Deuteronomy chapter 30. God says, he says, listen, if, if you get your heart right with me and, and you change your ways, I know it's tough to love me. He says, but the Lord your God will change your heart and the hearts of, of your descendants so that you will love him with all your heart and souls so that you, you will live. The Lord is saying that if you just give it to me, if you surrender to this idea of love, I'll change your heart and make you love me. Why? Because I, I want you to live. Because the only way that you can live is to love me. Not only will I make you live and not only will I change your heart, I'll change the heart of your children. Whew. Some of us are struggling with children who don't really love the Lord. Don't you know that if you submit to the idea of love, this thing is multi-generational? God says, I'll change your heart, and then I'll change your children's heart. There are people sitting right here right now whose children would not serve God, who didn't care about God. They came to church out of rebellion, but the Lord loved them so deeply that one night while their children were sleeping, the Lord came in and revolutionized a child with his love, and this person woke up with the love of God over their hearts. Yeah, some people are going to have a dream. God's going to give somebody a dream. He's going to give somebody an encounter. He's going to give someone your loved one an encounter. All because of his love for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone say, Lord, Lord. fill me with your unfailing love. Mm. Now, the love of God. He loves you already. But the love of God comes in encounters once you experience it you'll never be the same again getting a revelation of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit releases the love of God in you and favor comes on you instantly esteem comes on you instantly self-worth comes on you instantly value comes on you instantly the knowledge that you are worthy of love comes on you instantly how many want the love of God this morning when we pray if you see some people will sit right up under me and listen to me teach right and sit here and not receive some of y'all just y'all on, on TikTok somewhere I, I, this is a TikTok. I want my heart ticking I'm the first pastor to ever say that I co coin that coin that <laughs> um, <laughs> that was good but, but uh, some of us like, you could be sitting right here. You know, Judas was sitting right next to Jesus and missed the whole thing. Isn't that something? You're sitting right next to the master of the universe and you betray him. That's crazy. You can be, Jesus says their hearts, he says, he says they, they listen to my words, but their hearts are far from me. So I don't want that to be us this morning. I want y'all to get this revelation. This thing changes everything. This love changes, this love heals diseases and heals sicknesses. This love brings favor. This love breaks generational curses. This love is real, man. This love will bring true love to you, healthy love to you. Lift your hands real quick, please. Under this sound. Lift your hands under this sound. Whew, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I, I want you to have an encounter with the love of God. And if you want it, you can get it right now. love of God Whew. down in the south campus lift your hands hmm. love of God Yahweh would you begin to flow over the people who are listening to the sound of my voice would you begin to give love encounters and a love injection to those who want it desperately? Would you begin to feel the hearts of the people who came for a love touch, a love illusion, a love baptism? Baptize people into love today. So you can get new wine, but you can't get new water. Because every ounce of water that's in the earth has been in the earth since day one. God says, my love for you has been here since day one. 
it's been here but you've got to receive it come on shift for me let's ask the Lord to fill us up right now oh You worship, you worship, you worship. Somebody's getting it. Yes. Somebody's getting it. Love makes you do the strangest things. Love makes you shout, love makes you dance, love makes you run, love sometimes makes you seem strange. Say love of God.
love of God. Just the voices. about to close out love of God fill every gap meet every need heal every sickness and every disease heal every virus even those who are asymptomatic those who don't know that they're sick heal generational curses heal us in our psyche heal us heal us Lord from hurts that are to come so that when the hurt comes, we're already healed. Heal us, love of God. Overflow. Permeate. Penetrate our souls. Mm. Come on, there's one more wave coming. Yeah, there it is. It's now. Released now. Oh. Jesus said, if you love me, 
I'll love you. My father will love you. And I'll manifest myself to you. Jesus is the expressed image of God's person. He is the revelation of love on the earth. Greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his brother. And Jesus loves you, man. May the joy of Jesus keep you. Have a seat. There may be someone here under the sound of my voice right now. And you know that you were impacted by the love of God. You may be in the south location. You may be listening. You may be streaming. You may be here. I really would encourage you to, to connect yourself to the greatest love source possible. To the one that loves you more than you love yourself. To the one that you felt his incredible love today. You can feel it today. It, I mean, this is not some game or gimmick. You can feel him. <sighs> there has been an empty void in your life. And atmospheres like this fills it for you. You have been separated. You feel that something is missing. And that separation is produced by sin. Sin is actual and willful transgression against what God said to do. That's all sin is. And, and God says, I want to remove that and replace that with love. I want to give you a fresh start, new beginning. And that starts with you giving your heart to God through Jesus Christ. When you do that, he'll fill you with love, give you some instructions, put you in a community, and you'll be on your way to living a life to where you go to heaven and not hell. <laughs>